Hi, my name is Sam Johnson, and this is Mark Reynolds, and we are voice teachers, live and in person. So excited to be with you today, and especially with Sam. It's been way too long. It's been way too long since we've done one of these. Super excited to react and analyze Queen plus Adam Lambert performing Nessun Dorma, which is a Puccini cover. Yeah, uh, it is so <laughs> excited. I'm so excited. I love that it says Puccini cover. I don't yeah. know why that makes me laugh. <laughs> can you imagine if like more classical people were like, this is a, this is uh, Quando Men Vo. It's a Puccini <laughs> cover. Or a Mozart cover. That's cool. Nessun <laughs> Dorma. How dare he say stanza in Italy <laughs> of all places? <laughs> Just how dare I singing this in Bologna is a very cool thing. A very cool, really. I would if I were him, I'd be incredibly intimidated. Yeah, to be singing in Italian in a foreign country when that's not like necessary native language. Yeah, you know? he sounds really good. I mean, he sounds like very crossover. But um, what are the things that you think differentiate? him being cast at the Met doing this and him doing this as part of Queen. Ooh, you know, I was thinking the same thing. I was like, well, what's making this sound opera? What's not making it sound like opera, right? It's kind of same type of thing. One of the things that's making it sound opera to me is there's a relatively consistent vibrato. It's very consistent. Very consistent, which is lovely. We're hearing a lot of squealo, which uh, is this forward, bright, pingy sound which I think he has in all of his Queen stuff and all of his solo stuff, which is one of my favorite parts about him. But with this, it does seem a little bit more balanced with the the depth. It does. It does. I, I think if I was to pull the, the differences, the things that I think are, are different, one is the larynx. If I had the bet is high, a little bit higher. Just a little. Than, than we would expect with an, a, a tenor singing the song, an a operatic tenor singing the song. The other one is there's probably not quite as much supports, as much mm. volume, because he's got a microphone, so he's just pulling off it a little bit. Yeah. Which is smart if you have a microphone. There's no reason to, you know, yeah. put a bunch of extra beef into it. So I agree. I mean, I, th I think that some of it is also just the Italian. I think that uh, a real opera person would be just way more picky about some of the phrasing and some of the pronunciation. Um, I think that comes across like even just little diphthongs, like they add up over the phrase to make it start sounding more poppy. He sounds awesome so yeah. far, though. Yeah. how he's approaching those high notes. <laughs> there is no difference. Okay, so the challenge to those of you who would be on here would be take this Compared to Pavarotti video, especially if you can get a side view of him singing Nessun Dorma and watch the mouth position. Yeah. You're going to notice it's almost identical. And the sound, like, it, it's an A. You're going to turn over at that point. Like, um, yeah, it, it sounds just like what I would expect in an opera house when he gets to the A, at least. Yeah, I mean, I mean, what we'd expect with a pop is that they might not turn over. They keep it yeah. in, in that wide space but he doesn't he lets it uh he covers it which is what we we say when he's saying flip over another term we use for that is it's a covered yeah. high note which it was lovely that was lovely he, that was perfect way to go adam lambert <laughs> yeah. so 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 the, the the question for most opera if we're looking at this opera and what's going through my mind is and that we can't tell unless we're in the same room with him is if we took away the mic would we hear him over an orchestra on that one i think we would um i mean Maybe depending on the size of the orchestra, but 
That sounds like a really lovely lyrical opera tenor voice. It me. does. It does. Yeah. If he was singing in front of me, I would not want to change a dang thing about this. Yeah, I would leave it. I would leave it. There's a little darker. Back going to the splash, like a splash. Is more how I would approach it. Yeah, is that about it? Th that's right. I mean, he, he it's just one of the big difference between opera and, and pop is the shape we make in the back of our mouth. Mm -hmm. So he went wide and boxy instead of adding the height in it, and and so it got a little bright. Also, some context. Mark was my voice teacher in college, and. Uh, my opera director in college and he directs operas and is in charge of an opera program and um I actually just got back from a six week uh, tour in Italy so, <laughs> yeah. so so this is really fun to watch yeah. yeah yeah but he's also like so good at the pop stuff and that's one of the things that really let me relate to him I think in college because I didn't have that real strict uh classical bel canto background and um having you say no, it's actually okay to sing Nessun Dorma like it's a Taking Back Sunday song was like just revelatory for me because it it feels like in that world it is so restrictive and pres prescriptive that if you're like anything other than this big sound that you like don't fit in in some ways. Another thing that I'm kind of noticing that he, he changes his approach for this versus some of the other stuff I've seen him do, I don't see his tongue on this. Like, is kind of how he would approach some of the other stuff. He just totally sticks it out, like the tip right. of the tongue, versus what I, I recommend for most people of just, like, keeping the tip inside and just the back out. I but, agree, I agree. Um, yeah. But that's another thing that I think just makes it sound a little bit richer than some of the other things he does. That would, yeah. <laughs> Look at those lips, too. He even got the little crack that Pop does. <laughs> what was the high note there? Was it the actual high note? Yeah, it was it the B. Was. Yeah, it was the B. B. Yeah. 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 It's great. Leading up to it, just his lips were so kind of puckered out. That lip radiation is so helpful, and I think that's a thing that's that I have to work on with a lot of students because uh, I also default to kind of a uh, mm -hmm. and kind of covering over like that yeah. versus the uh, yeah. that I think helped it sound a lot more um, classical leaning versus if we went more the <laughs> that would have way too much brightness. But yeah. like internally for those top notes, I bet there's not a huge change of what he feels singing this style versus singing some of the Queen stuff. I would agree. I, I think, you know, a, a lot of people, it's interesting, you're talking about the people who, you know, you felt permission when you're giving, you know, chance to like sing pop stuff or whatever is fine. It's my experience with some some of the young singers that are operatic singers is we'll do like a silly, ridiculous, like karaoke night or they'll have a chance to sing a pop song where they won't realize I'm listening. And I'll stop and be like, Okay, so why aren't you doing that when you're singing opera? Because yeah. that's what we've been asking all, all along. Yeah. And they're like, wait, what? It's like, yeah, that's actually way closer to what we've been asking for than when you're trying to do what we're asking for. So yeah. can you just do that? And then they do it. Both, it's just surprising. Yeah. Like, so. I mean, I remember, I, I hope this isn't oversharing, but Vanessa was told me the story of she was singing Beyonce on a choir bus. <laughs> like, and, and the vocal coach, Emily, was like, just sing everything like that. And... It's like, yeah, I mean, when you, there's, there's also this element of just, this doesn't matter when singing that kind of stuff, where I think people who make this their life, like, it matters all the time to the point of it being a detriment. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> you like, it's yeah. easier to get in your head and just singing like that, like, yeah. Anything else? No, it's just been, it's, it's just been so nice to watch some good singing where he's not be, trying to be precious. He is making some language mistakes, but do we still enjoy it? Yes. 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 <laughs> if you are an Italian person, please comment below. Do you Are you bothered by how he's pronouncing some words? 
I don't know. Would love to know some some people's opinions. Yeah, I'll be honest. Like the, the flip would be if I'm listening to a great singer from a foreign country singing in English and it's not perfect, do I really care? No, I don't. <laughs> no, I don't care. <laughs> <laughs> Maybe I should, but I don't. Yeah, we're we're hardcore mainstream opera people who care a lot about those things. <laughs> Uh, thank you so much for showing up. This was really, really was fun. Thank it's you. it's Thanks. so much more fun to do this in person where we can actually hear when the other person's about to talk <laughs> versus <laughs> over a computer. That is lovely. It's nice. Thank you, Sam. Thank you. And thank you for watching. If you are interested in signing up for a voice lesson with either of us, go check out vocalease.net, linked in the links below, etc. Thank you, Mark. Thank you. See you next time, guys.